So before I start with SIP profile, why is it is actually used? Okay, it is actually used to normalize your calls. Okay, to make sure your incompatible device can uh, get the message the way they are expecting. Maybe like sometime uh, your call manager is sending an invite, but maybe your PS10 is expecting some additional information over there, or maybe he wants uh, some of the information that needs to be removed over there because of which the calls are dropping. So what you do is while Cube is acting as an edge device, so you can perform a normalization over there so that the calls which are coming in from the PSTN, you can do the modification to the calls over there or to the messages or the, and the same way the calls which are going out, you can do the modifications for the calls as per the PSTNs or ITSPs requirement as well. Okay. Like so let's what see. kind of uh, modification? I don't understand. What kind of modification? Modification could be at any point, right? So if you have an invite, you want to modify your <clears throat> your from header, or your you want to modify your caller ID, or maybe if your PSTN says I don't want the Cisco uh, GUID, okay, the GUID should be removed whenever you're sending me the invite messages or mm -hmm. maybe the from header should include this, this, uh, this FQDN instead of IP address, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to do those small modifications in the SIP messages, right? So we have uh, plenty of examples which you can, which we can go through and then you can understand that what kind of modification we can perform over there. All right, so SIP profile supports any wildcards, okay? Uh, I'll talk about any wildcards later on, okay. Now, SIP rule indicates that the rule applies to any messages. So, what do you mean by any messages? How many type of messages you have? There are- Five? No, 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 there are just two. Basic one, so request. Request and response. Yes, and response. Okay. So in, the rule could be applied to any of those uh, messages, either a request or a response messages within a specified category, okay? In a SIP messages, there are two different kinds of categories. One is SIP, that is considered as your SIP headers, and SDP, which includes your media capabilities, right? So you can do the modification either to your SIP header, you can also do the modification to your SDP information or SDP header, does it matter if it's a request message or a response message? Using an any in place of SIP method makes the rule apply to all the SIP methods. Okay, so what do you mean by SIP methods? So in request, you have many methods like invite, you have a buy message, you have <clears throat> Uh, in response, you have 200, okay, you have 180 uh, ringing, you have 100 crying, okay? So if you say all requests, so all messages which are part of your request, uh, the modification will be applied to all your request messages. It doesn't matter if it's an invite message or a buy message, whatever it is, right? So if you don't want to specify the method, you can use the any wildcard so that it can be applied to your comp to your uh, to your request or the response completely. <clears throat> Dealing with multiple invites during the calls. Now there are basically two types of invites. One is invite, that is your initial invite, and the other one is re invite. Anyone knows why we use re-invites? What is the use of re-invite? No one is aware of it? Right, okay. So let's say uh, if your call is active, so for how many session, for how many minutes your, your SIP session will be active, right? So maximum it will be active for 30 minutes by default, okay? That's the default timer. But does that mean after 30 minutes, the call gets dropped? No. 
So what happens is the re-invite has been exchanged so that it refreshes your session timer and then it keeps your session active. Even when the user presses the hold button, right? At that time, the re-invite messages are being exchanged, right? So re-invite messages are exchanged once your call setup is done. That is called, that is also for use for your mid call signaling. Okay. So for the time being, just understand there are two different types of invites. One is invite and one is re-invite. The rules for the invite messages is only applied to your first invite in the call. And the re-invite supports in the rule allow you to process the subsequent invites, which means if you want to do any modification to the initial invite, you have to use a SIP method. You have to modify it. Uh, you have to mention it as an invite. And if you want to use, or if you want to modify any of the information in the re-invites, then you have to use the SIP method as re-invite. Because if you, if you configure it as invite, it will only affect your first invite message. It won't affect your re-invite messages. Okay, you, you have to know the call flow includes the re-invites and you have to normalize them. So without knowing the call flow, you cannot uh, normalize the re-invites. And the last part is, what is the general format? What is the general format to modify? This is a match string and this is a replacement string. So whatever you want to match, you will add it over here and whatever you want to replace, sorry, you want to add it or you want to add, uh, you, you will mention over here, okay? There are total four different uh, uh, methods using which you can do a SIP profile. One is you can do add, you can do remove, you can do modify, and the last is you can do copy. Copy is something which we are not going to uh, focus on. So we are going to focus on these three methods that is add, remove, and modify, okay? So I'll stop this presentation and I'll just take you through some of the parameters, like how actually you configure it so that you have an understanding about it. So you see voice class SIP profile and then you can give any number like 100. Okay, now, as I mentioned, there are two types of messages, either request or response. So first you will define it's a request or a response message. So let's say if it's a request message. Okay, so do you know how can you differentiate the request and re response messages? Do you have any idea about it? No. No? <clears throat> Uh, so I'll give you a basic, the simple idea. So the one which starts with the numbers are always response messages. The one which is always alphabets are your request messages. Clear? Yeah, yeah uh, this one I know, yeah. Yeah, this one you know, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So the request, and then you say what kind of request message it is. It's a re-invite, or it's an invite, whatever it is. So I'll say it's an invite. Now, <clears throat> you can do a modification either on your SIP header or SDP header. Just, in, just uh, ignore the peer header for the time being, okay? So if you want to do the modification in your media negotiation or media capabilities, you have to mention as SDP header. And in case, if you want to do any modification to your actual SIP message, you have to mention a SIP header. So in your invite message, I'll say SIP header. So on your SIP invite messages, these are the parameters which are available. 
So maybe let's say if you want to do a modification to call ID or C sequence number, you'll say, okay, I want to do a modification to C sequence number. And after that, this is the match condition. This is the uh, modify condition. And okay, C sequence. Let's say the C sequence parameter itself is missing. So this would be the syntax. If you want to remove the C sequence, this would be the syntax. Okay. And if you want to modify it, you would say this way. Okay. We will look at the example one by one, but for the time being, just try to understand the syntax. First, you will define the request or response. Then you will define in the request or in the response, what kind of message you want to modify. After that, you will say you want to modify the zip header or a SDP header. Okay. Now, once you define it's a zip header, under your zip header, what you want to modify the two parameter, the from parameter, the user agent via parameter, whatever it is. Okay. You want to add it, you want to modify it, whatever the last part. Okay. So this is how you actually configure your SIP rules. Now let's have a look at the presentation and let's have a look at the examples which I have over here. Okay. So I have an example over here for the SIP profile. So we have a buy message over here. Now what it says, what is a buy message talking about? It says, Remove the reason SIP header, right? Remove the reason SIP header from the buy and cancel message. Now, first thing you have to tell me, the buy and cancel messages, are they SIP request or the SIP response? These two messages are SIP uh, request messages or response messages, what are they? Uh, you said request always starts with alphabet, right? Like right. Like so they right both here. are request messages. Request. Okay. Is this a SIP header or SDP header? Uh... Is this SIP or SDP? So there are two different protocols. SIP and session description protocol. So session description protocol carries your media capabilities and SIP carries your normal uh, normal signaling information. Yeah, so this is your this is your SIP header. SIP header, okay. Okay. It does not include anything regarding the media capabilities. Okay. So you remember in one of your session I told, showed you M is equal to audio, M is equal to video. So that's oh, your yeah. SDP information. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So buy and cancel, which is a request, which is a request messages. And you want to modify the SIP header. Okay. And in your SIP header, you want to remove this parameter. That is reason. Okay. So Let's do one thing. Let's go to the queue. Uh, let's actually take it from the left hand side. Uh, where is this? Oh, I cannot open the RDP. Keep it over here. Hey, Sugar, just one quick question while you do that. You said mm -hmm. there's a way to identify the uh, the requests and the response messages. I kind of missed that when you explained that. So if you look at this SIP uh, call flow, the one which is starting with alphabets, right? The invite the acknowledgement, the buy messages, these are request messages. Okay. The one which is starting with numbers, that is 100, 180, 200 are response messages. Okay, so the number are response messages and the yes. letters are, are, uh, are... Right. 
I request. Okay. Request, all right? Right. Okay. Thanks. So I want to modify, I want to remove the reason from my separate request header. So I'll say request. What kind of message it is? It is a by message. So I'll say by. Question mark. This is a SIP header. So I would say SIP header. Question mark. What do you want to do in the SIP header? I want to modify the reason parameter. So is there anything called as reason over here? Or there you go, reason. Question mark. Now what do you want to do? You want to add a header. You want to copy that. You want to modify that. You want to remove that. So if you look over here, it says we remove it. So I'll say remove. The same thing I'm going to do it for the cancel message. Instead of buy, I'll say cancel message. Let me show you. So what we did is we configured this rules. But the problem is, how can I test this? Right? How can I test this? So I have a tool over here. I can just show you. It's available. So what I can do is I can just paste my SIP profile over here. And then whatever the invite messages I have over here, I'll simply copy that. I'll paste it over here. And then I'll run the script. If my SIP profile is right, it will give me an output, like what actually modification it is doing to me. Now, if you see over here, it is highlighting something over here that is a reason message. So it means the reason is getting deleted. And if you see over here, after this part, it directly starts with the content length. There is no reason header, right? So if you want to remove anything from your SIP header, this is how you're going to remove it.